I ran across this bug, um, well, over the past couple of days. I've kind of been tracking it down off and on because it's one of the bugs that you get uh, that is intermittent and hard to find. So um, finally figured out how to reproduce this thing. It's based on some timing. And I think in some ways it is unique to this application, but it's worth um, taking a look at and, and kind of walking through how you find a bug like this. So um, we first heard about this in the production application because people would go to click on a button and nothing would happen. And then you'd be like, what's going on? So then they would refresh the page and everything would just magically work. Um, but still, it only happened rarely, but that's a very bad user experience, especially a very bad first user experience. So what we wanted to do is figure out what was going on. Um, and almost by chance, I managed to reproduce it because I was typing really fast and found out that if you type really fast, um, you can get the error to, to manifest. So what happens is with this application, you go to the home page. Um, you're given just a, a normal home page, but then you click on login. You do the login, but before it renders the, the page that results from the login that it re redirects to, um, you type a new value in the URL, and then it will load up a different application. So in the one case, it loads an Ember app, and in the second case, when you type in the new URL, it loads the React application. Okay, so that was you know, kind of lucky that I figured out how to reproduce it. Um, and you have to type pretty fast to get it to do it. However, this is what you get in the output, and this is the part that I wanted to focus on. Because once you have figured out how to reproduce some of these bugs in React, um, it can be difficult to figure out just what the heck is going on. Um, you'll notice that we get this warning, React mount, elements has been removed, and you get that over and over and over again, you know, lots and lots of times before we get to some of these um, pink errors. Uh, it's really easy to ignore the warnings. I know that people do that fairly frequently. You're like, oh, it's just a warning. But a lot of times the warnings that you're getting um, are resulting or causing the errors that you see below. And in this case, that's what's going on. Um, you can see this target node has markup rendered by React, but there are unrelated nodes as well. So you're like, what? Um, and then you go look for white space and you find out that it's not a white space problem. And then you look at this error and you're like, wow, that happens a lot. Um, so what's going on there? Uh, scanning down the console even further reveals these invariant violations, which is a really popular error in a React application. Um, but you notice right here, it says unable to find element and it gives you this identifier, this 0 .0, 0 0.0, etc. And then it says, well, this is probably what happened. You probably forgot to put a form around something or a paragraph tag around something. Um, so you can spend some time looking at your code to, to figure that out. However, this error in combination with root element has been removed um, makes me go, oh, let's look at the components that are actually rendered on the page. So then if we look at the elements that are rendered into the page, you can see right here, data-reactID is equal to point 0.1. Well, point 0.1, um, this is the top level element and it will correspond to this value right here. I don't know if you can see where the cursor is pointing, but there's a point zero in the invariant violation um, entry right there. So basically what that says is the root element should have a React ID of point zero. It doesn't. It has a React ID of point one. That means that somehow that React element is rendered and then completely removed and re-rendered again. Um, so the act of transitioning too quickly will actually cause two pieces of code to run. The first one um, renders the initial code that you would expect, um, the React code, to render the, uh, the point zero. And then I think the React router runs and for whatever reason, it immediately transitions into this dashboard, probably because in our routes, we've set that as the default route. And when it does that, it removes the original div node from the 
from the DOM and replaces it with the point 0.1. Okay, so that's the problem. Um, this should be point 0.0. It shouldn't be swapped out so quickly. Uh, the fix is actually kind of interesting and seemed uh, trivial, and it actually is trivial. Uh, inside of my show, well, actually, let's start here. Inside of the code that initializes the app, we're rendering directly into document body. Um, that means that React is responsible for everything that gets rendered into the DOM, and it will actually strip out your strip your script tags and throw them away. And we we render a couple of script tags um, into the page right here, and it's fine to throw them away because they've been initialized and they're not really needed anymore. However, um, I believe that that kind of contributes to this this odd bug that we're seeing. So this is the solution. Uh, basically we render into an element instead of rendering directly into the body. And then coming over to here, we're going to insert a root level div element that is inside of the DOM before any of the React code runs. Okay. So now that we've done that, and come back here. Does that need to be inside of a body tag? <clears throat> Uh, yeah, this actually gets rendered in, sorry about that. This is in a Rails application. So this this is just the piece that's rendered into the body. The the body tag and everything else are handled by a layout uh, view that's somewhere else. So um, this is just the content that's specific to this one page. The HTML, the head, the body, everything else comes from layout. Um, okay, and you can see right here, this is our code that we use across all of our applications that we uh, use to load client settings. Um, this manifest script is, a, we can talk about that another day. Uh, this is the actual code that is the React code. So when everything's said and done and, and Webpack compiles everything in one file, that's what this guy is right here. But now I have this DOM node sitting there ahead of time. Okay, so now the I, let's go retest this. So I'm going to try this, uh, try to get this to reproduce the error again. It takes me just one second. Um, hopefully it does not. Um, interestingly enough, um, once you have this, once this happens, nothing works. Like even just your drop downs don't work. You can't log out. You can't click on anything. You'll just start getting all these random errors. So you have to refresh the page. Uh -oh. Okay, it's currently refreshing the page. Sorry. Um, And we're going to log out eventually. Sorry, it's taking a minute to refresh the page. Okay, so now we're logged out. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did to generate the error in the first place, and hopefully we don't see the error this time. So I'm going to go log in. Um, sorry, I'm doing the login on a different screen, but you can the, the UI doesn't matter. All that matters is really the console that you can see over here. So now as quickly as I can. Redirect to the reader, which is the main page where we were seeing the error before. And all of those warnings are now gone. We have some other errors in here that we are going to have to go deal with. But all the warnings are gone, and the application behaves as it's supposed to. Um, the other nice thing is, if I go look at the elements in the page, there's that data react ID equals 0. .0. So now we're rendering correctly and here's this top level root element that React can interact with uh, to render correctly. So, um, as it turns out, it's a very, very simple fix, just a couple of tiny bits of code. But bugs like this, um, the problem is finding them, finding out how to reproduce them. So, that's the biggest challenge. Uh, so, when we're testing as much as possible, it's really, really important to notice exactly what it is that you're doing when a um, as you use an application, because then you can go back and reproduce the steps. Whenever we get, um, whenever we have bugs logged that are that say I was on this page and everything just stopped working, uh, those kinds of bugs are really not um, very helpful for diagnosing and reproducing the problem because then the developers left to wonder what were they doing at that moment. Whereas if the QA tester, um, or you know, a lot of times our developers are actually doing the testing, if you're very cognizant of exactly the actions that you're 
um, going through um, as you test an application, then you can think back and say, now what was I doing at the moment when this bug was manifest itself? Go back and try to do that again um, and see if you can get it to reproduce. And then you can go through and either create a, um, a screen recording or list out the steps and provide URLs in the bugs that are entered so that it's it only takes a few minutes to reproduce rather than a couple of days because if we spend a couple of days reproducing bugs it's, it's very expensive. So, um, any questions? Okay, thanks you guys. <laughs>